Hello everybody, this is VJ Kulkarni with uh, GL Communications and today we will be discussing our Packet Scan HD product um, uh, which is our uh, packet, uh, high density all IP analyzer for uh, 1 and 10 gigabit uh, networks. Uh, it, uh, it can analyze and uh, um, give you detailed analysis of almost all IP protocols uh, and uh, give you detailed analysis of uh, uh, voice traffic especially uh, with its companion uh, what's called packet data analyzer. So we'll be going over how this uh, product can analyze very large pipes, large Ethernet pipes from 1 to 10 gigabit networks. Of course it is a companion um, product to our packet scan uh, which also gives you uh, the capability to do uh, the same features and functions however at using your the uh, the NIC capability within the within your own within the PC itself so packet scan packet scan HD are the products of concern here um, so today uh, I'll be uh, assisted by John Phipps uh, who's a packet expert and um, uh, Shashi Murthy uh, who will give us a little demo of the capabilities of uh, packet scan uh, when there's a large amount of traffic uh, flowing and the particular traffic that we want to analyze might be a very thin stream like for example perhaps voice calls within the uh, within the uh, uh, within the large pipe. Uh, so we'll give a little demo of, of that and show you how uh, we can zoom in using the hardware filters within Packet Scan HD uh, to uh, zoom in on the voice calls and also to give you the performance of the voice calls within that very large pipe. Uh, in addition, uh, uh, we have Srinivas uh, from our GL India office who is the author of some of the filtering software so he'll also help us explain some uh, if we run into some detailed questions, uh, I'll pass on those questions to, to Srinivas. So now we're gonna, I'm going to hand off to uh, John Phipps and he's going to start the presentation and I'll be chiming in every now and then. So uh, John, uh, why don't you uh, start please. Okay, the... Um, uh, Okay, I see people are still arriving. Um, yeah, basically the uh, the problem is, or not the problem, the the state of the world is that more and more people are getting internet access, and um, they're getting access from fixed broadband, and they're getting access from uh, mobile. Um, as a result, uh, uh, various service providers, both the mobile and the uh, fixed network are giving access uh, to people with uh, higher and higher speeds, uh, 45 megabits, uh, uh, 4G services with uh, mobile and uh, fiber to home, business, uh, desk or nodes. And um, there's sort of been a paradigm shift of the... Okay. Okay. Of the traffic that's going over the internet now. Um, we're well beyond the days where people just got on to do browsing of uh, sites. Uh, now we have uh, traffic that's um, video, Google searches, Facebook, peer-to-peer uh, -peer file sharing, machine-to-machine uh, uh, -machine APIs, sort of like your iPhone talking to Twitter, um, gaming, uh, basically lots of services and those services are basically uh, taking the people's access where the, it used to, well I think in 2014 the average access speed was uh, 4 megabits per, uh, per user and instead of uh, just brief downloads uh, they're actually um, streaming audio, streaming videos, uh, Netflix, um, HBO, and uh, they're occupying the uh, pipes more and more. And uh, that's only going to get worse. 
And one of the other things that's going on is that uh, we have what's known as the Next Generation Network. And the Next Generation Network is where um, formerly uh, fixed TDM services that were carrying uh, voice, um, ALA, MULA, um, are going over to an all IP network. And um, there's different architectures. They have the IP multimedia system, subsystem, or IMS, um, MPLS networks. And um, one of the big issues is that, uh, and it's actually true for, for GL and most people, um, people are going over to a voice over IP for their telephone systems. And uh, as a result, Um, trying to switch to the next slide here. Vijay, um, uh, can you switch to the next slide? As a result, we have um, bigger and bigger pipes of traffic uh, that are um, being used on the network. Um, and so voices competing in, in video for that matter, competing against um, all these other uh, uh, applications and uh, uh, users, and uh, it's a major issue now with uh, voice because uh, the traffic induces uh, things like um, uh, latency, where the traffic is competing against the other traffic to get through the networks, and uh, so we have to be able to monitor this and so that's where we've come up with this packet scan HD where we have uh, added uh, the capability of uh, monitoring uh, multiple 1 gig ports or 10 gig ports and so uh, the like John uh, <laughs> I've been here uh, okay so uh, just to give you a, a rough idea of the kind of tasks that you're you're presented with uh, in the real world you've got this massive pipe and you're trying to find uh, what the problem is uh, with uh, let's say a, a interactive conference call or a, a voice call and the, the problems that John mentioned about latency uh, are, are obviously very severe for such quality of service sensitive applications like voice and voice conferencing. So essentially you have this problem of finding a needle in a haystack and, uh, uh, and you're, you're, you're faced with the, this proposition where either you look at the fire hose or you're able to filter that traffic and only uh, observe the traffic of interest. So we're, 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 we're faced with this needle in a haystack and trying to filter that traffic uh, so that we can analyze the traffic of interest and see the performance statistics of that particular traffic. We want to be able to filter that traffic, timestamp it, uh, observe the latency, uh, the uh, performance, for example, of a voice stream or of a conference call. Uh, you, generally speaking, data is not so sensitive to latency. So uh, that, uh, you know, that uh, the, 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 interact, the time interaction for data is much more tolerable. So these time sensitive services require, you know, special attention. So John, continue. Okay, so that's where we come up with the uh, packet scan HD. Uh, so you can see we have uh, uh, cards uh, with uh, a 10 king 10 gig case uh, as shown above the um, uh, has SFPs for optical interfaces and uh, we have um, the same actually option available for the uh, 4 by 1 gig E Okay, the, the Pakistan and Pakistan HD applications uh, basically can go anywhere in the network. Uh, they are a multi-protocol, or all-in-one we call it, uh, application which gives the capability of monitoring both the, uh, the protocols um, 
that are used for setting up calls of the various networks and for analyzing the protocols. Um, so whether you're in 4G, mobile networks, uh, 2G, voice over LTE type of applications on PLS networks. Um, or either going into an IMS system, you might have Megaco, um, GCP, and SIGTRAN signaling. Or with video, you have uh, H.263264 video streams. Uh, with the voice over IP, you have the SIP protocol with uh, RTP for voice and T38 for uh, fax. And the packet scan can also be used as a, a probe for a central database a web server for our net surveyor web product uh, so that all the call detail records uh, throughout a particular network can be uh, put into a central database and then uh, users can uh, use a you know, just regular web uh, browser to get into the uh, the database and uh, do reports and monitor their uh, uh, call quality. Um, one of the things we also provide is uh, MOS scores and uh, uh, we also have the ability to capture the actual RTP traffic to voice files and then we have uh, applications such as our voice band analysis application which can actually give you detailed um, measurements of the uh, the voice quality the, the signal level noise level and um, echo level and those sorts of uh, conditions John uh, let me uh, uh, let me interject one thing here and I think uh, uh, here in uh, this this picture of our net of the, of the network and the evolution of the network I think is uh, a good depiction of, of where uh, where the networks are going, the next generation networks. They're all going towards IP, uh, whether they're wireless networks, because as you all know, LTE and UMTS are all uh, using IP pipes. LTE, of course, is based on IP. Uh, any other generation networks that will follow will be very IP-centric. Uh, voice, uh, as John mentioned, uh, most enterprises are going towards uh, voice over IP. Our PBX here is a voice over IP. Um, homes are going over voice over IP. Triple play services uh, are all going to uh, IP. Um, so there's this grand evolution uh, and uh, towards IP, IP centric. All traffic, whether it's voice, video, or data, is going to be riding on IP pipes. Obviously, that means that these diameters of these pipes are going to get larger and larger, uh, and especially at the, uh, well, they are already very large in the core, and they're going to be getting larger at the edges. So uh, whether you're an enterprise uh, um, or a carrier or a service provider, your pipes are going to become larger. And this problem of investigating the pipe, investigating the traffic of interest will get uh, further you know, complicated, and you'll have to have sophisticated tools to filter the traffic of interest and understand its performance vis-a-vis -vis other traffic. So, John, continue. And so, um, this sort of shows the capability of signaling. We have a uh, wide range of uh, protocols uh, for voice and fax. We um, Unlike the uh, Wireshark, we call this uh, Wireshark on steroids. Um, besides the uh, G711 codex, um, we have um, um, most other voice codecs that are being used so that people can monitor the uh, voice uh, in real time or in record in real time. Uh, we also have um, a video call uh, capability. And as I mentioned before, we have the net surveyor where you can put it all to an Oracle database. Okay, this is the real-time analysis uh, screen. We can um, has uh, some maybe. John, did, John yes. can I interrupt you for one second here? Uh, I just wanted to say one thing about. Uh, Oh. This, this screen right here. So, as we can see here, um, 
uh, signaling, practically every signaling protocol that, uh, you know, the legacy networks had lots of different signaling protocols, ISDN, SS7, CAS, uh, TDM-based protocols, ATM-based protocols, protocols adapted for Sonnet and uh, uh, T1 and E1 and those legacy pipes, analog uh, POTS lines. So obviously this uh, the new network, the new generation network has to accommodate all of those legacy protocols. And in addition, there's a rich set of new protocols that uh, to handle the new services. And of course, uh, things like uh, diameter and radius, these are all uh, authentication security type of protocols that are also necessary for this new environment. So our packet scan HD as well as packet scan can handle all of these protocols. Uh, I don't think there's any protocol that we don't handle, but uh, uh, the uh, the protocols that are sort of analog of the TDM, like I Sig SIGTRAN, for example, that's the analog, uh, the, 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 the variation of the of SS7 over for IP. Uh, in addition, when you actually get down to the actual traffic that you're going to be sending, we're talking about voice, fax, video, uh, uh, this uh, modem traffic. These are, this is the basic traffic that and data that uh, is is actually the content that is writing. In addition to that signaling, so we're still involved in in the problems of setting up calls and tearing them down and and so on. So. So that traffic has to be analyzed, whether it's stream-based, like voice, or database, like HTTP traffic, uh, or if it's video, uh, then you have a, a new set of uh, parameters that uh, you need to analyze. Uh, by the way, you know, video, most, especially here in America, most of the video is slowly migrating over to IP, and uh, on-demand video is, is mostly uh, carried by IP IP um, uh, services, so that's also becoming is changing the whole economy and changing the uh, uh, the you know uh, the whole business environment of how uh, providers provide video, which is a, a very very important uh, service that people are interested in, and uh, and of course the net surveyor John mentioned that our packet scan can be talking to a central database where it's collecting all those traffic. Sorry, John. Go ahead. Yeah, John. The uh, the the voice uh, front. Uh, one of the codecs, or some of the codecs mentioned, like G seventy two and G seventy two point one. We also do AMR wideband. Uh, our wideband codecs, where they're getting away from the eight kilohertz, um, uh, three hundred to thirty five hundred hertz uh, model, up to um, a wider bandwidth, both uh, higher quality uh, speech. And so this actually is a, a great tool for. Um, uh, debugging issues with uh, implementations with the, the new wideband codecs. Let's see. Okay, so the um, uh, Pakistan HD can capture about 5,000 uh, uh, simultaneous calls. It's uh, sold as a, a monitoring appliance. One of the issues that uh, uh, we have with the uh, traditional Wireshark approach uh, is that you're using standard PCs with uh, NIC cards and um, you're sort of uh, trapped in the world of um, uh, Windows. And in this case now we're using a, a set of NIC cards that are geared for actual monitoring of the high-speed links and so that we have a more accuracy as far as our captures are concerned. Uh, we mentioned uh, hardware filters so we can go into anywhere in the, uh, the IP uh, stream basically in uh, the IP frame and filter on any part of the actual stream the parameters and we support all the uh, protocols from SIP to LTP, LTE, uh, video packs, whatever. And uh, we also have an offline version with the packet scan FB, which you can do a capture and then we can uh, take large capture files and import them into a packet scan uh, for further analysis. Um, we also do IPv4 and IPv6. Uh, 
I'll show you the screens. Uh, usually we can packet data analysis screens. So um, we'll go over the filtering of the call quality score of the MOS and the R factor, which is the penal heaven wire shark, uh, so that on a call by call basis you can see what the actual quality is based on the factor performance of the uh, of the call. Okay, and then as shown on this screen now, we have the uh, the summary view, so you can see the the individual packets uh, details. Um, we also have an um, initial feature where we can show you uh, 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 statistics for you can set up um, uh, filters to go into specific uh, uh, parts of the the protocols and. Um, see what the actual frame counts, the statistics of the actual uh, data. And we can do a, a call detail record view, so you can uh, click on a particular call and then see the, um, the messaging that is involved with that particular call. trouble with this remote accessing. <laughs> yeah, John, here, let me, uh, let me help you here. Okay, I okay. think this is where you want to be, right? Okay. Yep. And this is our packet data analysis uh, screen. Um, um, basically, you can see a, a call that's uh, selected. You can see a call graph of the actual uh, sibling that's involved. Uh, below the uh, purple line that you see is the actual stream the originator to the destination, then from the destination back to the originator. Uh, John, let me let me interrupt you here one second. So I just wanted to make it clear. Um, so we have this, the real time analysis screen, and the and the, the the screen that actually focuses focuses in on video voice or voice traffic is what we call our packet data analysis screen. So these are two companion uh, applications that work together hand in hand. Uh, this screen, of course, this is the one that captures every frame and every fr of Ethernet frame uh, uh, based on whatever hardware filtering that you may have uh, have set up and or also whatever view filter or capture filter you set up. So there's many degrees of filtering uh, that are going on. Hardware filtering, capture filtering, and view filtering. So all of these are combined to give you the view that you want within that large massive pipe. So this screen it, it sort of uh, tries to give you um, uh, the, the very top pane is the, is, the, uh, is the summary pane which is giving you uh, what each frame looks like. Obviously there's going to be hundreds of thousands, millions of frames that are flying by but we're filtering those and presenting those in in, in the manner that you selected, the, what, the frame that is highlighted is given to you in the uh, in the second pane. So, if you highlight a particular frame, you can see the details of that frame. If you are interested in the hex uh, version of that, that, that's the third pane. Uh, if you're interested in certain statistics that are being accumulated while all these frames are being being collected, for example, let's assume you want to count all the SIP packets or all of the HTTP packets or some combination thereof, then that's the statistics pane. Uh, now, finally, you might be interested in the call behavior of particular types of traffic, like, for example, voice calls. Let's assume that you were analyzing voice calls, SIP calls in this particular case, or skinny calls, or H323 calls, or Megaco calls, or whatever. Then you could set up the call detail record view to collect those frames that are associated with a call. So obviously they're flowing through time and uh, all of those are being collected uh, and analyzed and they're being presented as one call here. This one line says that this particular call is completed and some statistics about that call are presented, the duration and so on. So that which transpired over a minutes or tens of minutes has now been collected into one line. That's one call. So, uh, like this, there might be hundreds of calls. So you can, you can uh, certainly list go through all of those. So that is that's our main real time analyzer. Um, now, uh, 
does this present all of the information that you could possibly get about uh, the, the, the traffic flow? No, the answer, okay. so we have something called packet data analysis. That means now we want to look into a particular call, a voice call that has, let's say, AMR wideband codec uh, and uh, uh, is sending DTMF tones uh, using IVR and uh, there's some quality issue. Well, how do, you, how do you examine that, that issue? Well, then you go to our packet data analysis. So here, the calls that you were interested in are now exploded in minute detail. And here we can list every one of these. These could be thousands of calls. And uh, here now we're taking that particular call and examining it in time uh, with the sick year you can see that there is signaling going on in this one pane where this is the standard SIP signaling. The actual one of the invite messages has been highlighted and you see the the, the detail, the session description protocol of the of that particular message. Uh, and that this all has to do with that particular call that is highlighted in the above pane. And here in this, John is going to go into some of the details here, and later Shashi is going to show you an actual demonstration of this. But this is where you explode a particular call that is occurring in time in this 10 gigabyte pipe. So uh, just to give you a clarification there. John, sorry, continue. Yeah, my other feature is uh, the, the little green arrow. Uh, you can select a call and you can uh, play and listen to it uh, real time. Uh, or in this case, it's a completed call, so you can listen to the uh, to the call that was just completed. Uh, under the uh, settings, we have the ability to go in and set up um, uh, trigger actions, uh, so that you can set a call to calling party or uh, sub packet condition uh, or all fax calls, and uh, uh, set up a trigger to uh, save the calls to save the call to a voice file, to save the call to a, a PCAP file or um, another standalone packet scan file. Um, or you can use MOS, so all calls that have an MOS less than uh, good, for instance, so you can uh, dump out all your bad calls, for instance. Uh, so it's uh, fairly uh, powerful. And then on the, the bottom, you'll see we have an active calls graph, so if you click that, it'll tell you how many calls are active at the time. Um, so there's, there's various parameters, and then uh, you can select the call and click on the little magnifying glass, and it'll take you to a detail view, which is the next slide. And when you get into the detail view, it'll, it'll give you um, a list of all the packets um, from each direction. And then we have uh, various uh, screens that will give you, in this case, the, the wave graph. So you can see uh, uh, the voice um, on live calls. You can see it's spectral display. Uh, RTV events are the uh, out-of-band uh, DTMF uh, tones in band or in-band DTMF tones. And then we have various graphs for jitter and uh, gap, gap distribution as well as the uh, the MOS and the R-factor uh, uh, displays. So the the heart of uh, this is the actual uh, ability to go in and uh, pick off the various uh, fields that you want to look at to, anal to analyze. Uh, so we have SIP and RTP, then you can burrow down into uh, various uh, fields, uh, RTP, SIP messages, uh, everything from the, the MAC layer, which is the top overall frame, down to um, the contents of the, uh, the actual uh, traffic uh, payload. So the heart of that basically is the, uh, the Internet frame, or Ethernet frame, the IP, uh, that all the packets in the pipe are all basically this format. Uh, we have uh, a MAC address, which is the uh, code that's uh, basically built into the um, NIC cards. Um, 
and then that goes down into a payload, which would be TCP, UDP, um, SCTP, and it's basically made up of uh, little individual fields that are defined in the various uh, protocols. So for a regular uh, uh, UDP, which is used for the uh, SIP signaling, uh, for RTP, for a web call, uh, you would start out with the Ethernet layer with the, the MAC addresses, and you get down uh, to the IP layer, which um, has the IP addresses. And then for UDP packet, you have the the actual port, so you have a, a destination address and then a particular port where the traffic is going to be going to. So for a, a set message, that port would be 5060 normally. Uh, for TLS 5061, that's a, a secure um, uh, SIP. And then uh, the UDP traffic, uh, you identify the, the protocol in the, the layer 3 field and then all the ports that are used for RTP traffic. And in order to do that with the uh, the HD product, uh, we've uh, uh, come up with a application that lets you go in and define what you feel is of interest, whether you're in the, the MAC layer, uh, uh, VLANs, IPv4, IPv6, and we've added uh, some custom uh, fields for uh, SIP and RTP messages. Um, so, John, let me um, uh, let me interject here a little bit. Okay, yeah, go ahead um, with this. This is, a, I think, a very good uh, slide to show them uh, how this is all. Uh, going to hang together. Well, this, in this slide, wire speed filtering. Well, obviously, we have these very, very large pipes that carry gobs of traffic. And uh, it consists of voice, data, uh, video, fax, uh, T38 fax, T30 fax, who knows, uh, HTTP browsing data, and so on. And uh, so the beauty of Ethernet, of course, is they're all packets, and they all have Ethernet headers and IPv4, IPv6 headers, and it's all very. Um, um, and these headers have uh, are, are labels that uh, give you a clear identification of what kind of traffic it is, unless of course you've encrypted some of the actual payload. So, uh, the, oh, so what this hardware filter, uh, the prior, what John was showing you earlier here. Um, uh, the, the, this, this filtering capability. Um, uh, the, these, these are the screens that allow you to, to filter different types of traffic. Uh, this is our uh, hardware filter GUI that allows you to create these complicated Boolean expressions. Uh, for example, let's say, uh, let's take a simple example like um, I, I want to capture all of the traffic between two IP addresses. Well, you could consider that to be a stream, right? A one stream, which is from one IP address to another IP address. Now, that particular pair can probably has lots of different types of multiplex traffic in it, but but certainly that's at least uh, a, a one identifiable stream, and so you could very easily say IP, this IP address and uh, this IP address filter all of those packets. So this, this GUI allows you to do something like that very easily, just by picking two IP addresses, constructing that Boolean expression, this IP address and this IP address. And now you can also add ors or nots or uh, uh, more complicated expressions. But this GUI allows you to do that. You can capture uh, perhaps within that IP stream, you want to only look at UDP traffic, which might be the case for uh, conferencing or uh, for, for video conferencing or for voice. Uh, so voice is usually carried using UDP. So you could identify UDP ports or the SIP port, for example, which John is going to show you. Okay, so John, continue. Yeah, so in, in this particular case, uh for IPv4, you have the source address, destination, these are the IP addresses, the protocol type, 
uh, it would be the TCP, UDP, SCTP type. Um, then we have some uh, other fields in here, header length, total length, checks and errors. Um, and meta and the protocol are various places in, from the, the Mac layer down to the lower levels where they uh, put in uh, checks and errors so that if um, you monitor those particular uh, ports that will tell you uh, if the packets are good or not. Okay, so the um, um, we're showing the uh, the field with uh, SIP and RTP. Uh, uh, basically, the application uh, can be uh, uh, used to or customize uh, if you have a, a customer that basically wants to uh, set up custom filters or custom traffic. Uh, we can go in and create a um, a custom. Uh, field for some particular uh, traffic, uh, such as RDP or SIP, um, so that it's uh, fairly flexible. The um, uh, in the actual operation, you'll see um, the users can define up to uh, ten filters, and then they can name whatever those filters are, then select them, and apply them uh, according to whatever um, uh, test condition they're trying to run, and then. Below that, you'll see we have the the actual uh, Boolean expression that's uh, being uh, sent down to the uh, the hardware itself. And so I mentioned the uh, the various um, uh, checks and errors. We have um, an example here, of, uh, basically looking over the all of the packets that are coming in, looking to see if there's any errors, for instance. In this example, we're looking just for HTTP traffic. Uh, this would also be applicable to, uh, say, Netflix, which uses uh, uh, port 80 uh, for its uh, uh, video streaming. Um, and then port 443 is uh, used for a secure uh, HTTP. And uh, So as you mentioned, we so basically we can apply all these filters, dump it to packet scan, and uh, uh, analyze. And so to do that, oops, wait a minute, I'll, 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 John, I'll take over here. Uh, let me. Okay, so we wanted to show you. Okay, so you understand this is wire speed filtering and setting up. So John just went through uh, that GUI that uh, hopefully makes the uh, filter, the hardware filter, set up as easy as possible. Uh, you can either create very simple Boolean expressions or complicated Boolean expressions to try to uh, zoom in on the traffic of interest within this very large, uh, let's say, 10 gigabit, the 10 gigabit pipe. Uh, so uh, what I wanted to show you now is, I think you've got the concept. I think maybe this is a good time, John, to show um, them about the demo. So I'm going to turn it over to Shashi and. Um, Shashi, I'm going to give you the screen. Um, uh, wait a minute, let's see here. A change presenter. To yeah, do you want to go over what you're uh, demoing? Yeah, she's going to go over this, this actual demo screen uh, and how it's set up. So let's see here. Uh, Shashi, where are you? Oh, there you are. Uh, okay, so got Shashi, here you go. Boom. Shashi, you have you have the screen. Uh, can we see your screen? Okay. Let's see if this all works. She's in the lab, so we're gonna try to uh, go to. Shashi, you can unmute your audio and uh, show us what you're what you're doing. Okay, can you listen to me? Yes, I can hear you okay. very clearly. Okay. All right. As uh, we just said, I have a setup with our uh, packet expert uh, generating two gigabytes uh, traffic, one gigabyte of traffic on each of the ports. As you can see here, uh, let me minimize this. 
So there is on port 2 there is 1 gigabyte traffic on port 3 there is 1 gigabyte of traffic and also we are there are also voice calls in this large pipe everything is connected to a 10 bit switch. switch yeah yeah, well, actually, actually, John was right because I, I thought maybe you had the screen for the uh, setup. So let me go back, uh, and okay. why don't you? I'll let me go back to my screen, and then okay. you can talk about the actual setup. Okay, that would sure. have been better. So let me do okay. that um, first. I will uh, go back to my screen. Do I have to make you the presenter again? No, no, no. I'll, I'll do that. Okay. All right, so here it is. Show my screen. I think, uh, okay, you all can see my screen now? Yes, okay. So why don't you explain this setup first, Shashi, okay? Okay, so here is, the, this is my configuration. Here is a packet expert. And I have a port two, I have a one gig traffic on port two connected to a switch. And I have one gig traffic port 3 connected to the switch and I'm taking some voice calls using our MapSip application and all these are connected to one big pipe that is 10 gig switch and there's a mirror port which I'm connecting to the packet scan HD that is uh, a 10 gig card here this is my setup so what I'm going I think to you have the I think you have the mouse and control so Hopefully we can see your mouse and uh, uh, and the I am setup. moving my mouse. I don't know for some reason. Okay. All right. Well, can, can you see my mouse moving? Yeah. Why don't you? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then. Okay. So what Shashi just said was th uh, this is our uh, MapSip product. Uh, MapSip means this is our uh, VOIP emulator. So uh, that's another story and another uh, webinar. <laughs> Uh, but it, it can generate hundreds to thousands of VOIP calls to so this product. And so Shashi has set up one map SIP talking to another map SIP, which is generating voice calls, RTP traffic, different codecs. Right, Shashi? Yeah. Okay. And that, that stream of traffic is going through this switch, uh, which is also being, uh, being uh, uh, there's another uh, uh, interfering traffic for the for the sake of this webinar, uh, this uh, packet expert, which is another product of ours that can generate uh, gigabits of traffic uh, on multiple ports, optical, electrical, and so on. So it's generating this interference traffic at a rate of about uh, I think two gigabits. And yeah, so one gig on this, each port one gig on each port okay and that switch has a mirror port right Just yes <laughs> okay which is connected to the 10 gig card to the 10 gig card and the 10 yes. gig card is actually capturing all of those frames yes okay, okay. so let's continue let me now can I change it back to your screen Shashi sure sure okay so I'm going to change presenter to you again and hopefully we can see your screen soon share your screen okay uh, do you uh, go ahead and do you see my screen uh, not yet but let's see change presenter to Shashi okay I don't know why it didn't go uh, let me see here. Why is that not happening? Um, yeah, I thought she needs to share her screen and it didn't take. Okay, yeah, start sharing your screen, Shashi. Shashi, uh, share your screen. I am. Oh, uh, okay. I'm not sure why that's not working. Um, okay. Well, we can't see your screen at the moment but for some reason um, um, why is that now let, let me try again change presenter to Shashi let's listen to that one more time yeah to, to <laughs> Shashi
Okay, share your screen. Okay. Yeah, it says waiting to view Shashi's screen, so oh, you need to start sharing your screen somehow or the other. Share your screen. Screen sharing started, it says. Okay. Alright. Uh, okay, well, why is that? Uh, change it again. I mean, make yourself as okay, well, let, let me make myself the presenter again. Hold on one second. Sorry, guys. Uh, do that. I show my screen, okay? Alright. Now I'm going to start sharing my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes. Right? Okay. So now I'm going to start sharing. Uh, change presenter to Shashi. And make Shashi the presenter. Uh, oops. Okay. Oh. All right. All right. Now. Show my screen. Shashi the new presenter. Now share your screen, Shashi. Waiting to view Shashi's screen. All right. Well, that's if you don't see, it, join through Team Viewer, Vijay. I don't think we have time to do all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. All right. So we're uh, okay. Sorry, guys. But we'll have to. Uh, um, we'll have to, to uh, do that sh screen sharing uh, another time. Can everybody see my screen again? Uh, uh, John, can you see yes. my screen? Okay. Yes. All right. Fine. All right. So uh, unfortunately, we cannot share Shashi's screen. <laughs> which she had a nice demo going. What she was going to show you was that you had this two gigabit of traffic and the frames were rolling by uh, at that two gigabit rate. Uh, and uh, uh, so she was going to show you that screen, uh, those uh, the frames, the actual, uh, F, uh, you know, the packet scan HD analyzer screen. And she was going to show you where those frames were rolling by. And then she was going to invoke the filter that uh, basically zoomed in on the uh, uh, the SIP and the RTP voice traffic. And as soon as she would have done that, we would have seen that the capture rate dropped from two gigabits per second to about uh, one or two megabits per second. So two gigabits to one or two megabits. And then we would have shown you the PDA and showing you how uh, we could actually analyze the calls, actually play the calls. So we have some sort of a technical difficulty. Can I come to your desk and try to access this, Vijay? I mean, while you are... Uh, the, the, let's, uh, well, we're going to try to do that uh, at okay. another time. Okay. All okay. Right. okay. All right. But anyway, she, well, anyway, Shashi, she had that all set up. Thank you, Shashi, for at least explaining it. We'll figure out what why it didn't happen a little bit later and then try to um, if anybody's interested please give us a call we'll be happy to show you that and uh, uh, now what I wanted to show was like without filter we get like uh, more than two gigabyte traffic and when I had the SIP and RTP filter we can get the traffic of interest uh, in my case it was like SIP and RTP traffic like it, it was around like one point four or five megabits per second so I was able to filter like one megabit traffic in two GB traffic. That's what I wanted to show. And also go into the packet data analysis of each call, giving all the details as uh, you and John mentioned. Okay. All right. Let's assume you actually did all of that. And uh, <laughs> thank you for, for showing us that. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, we'll, we'll work out the technical difficulties. You all have to take us on faith that that all worked. Um, but in any case, uh, let's uh, let's continue moving on. Uh, John, uh, let's go uh, to the next yeah. slide. The, the yeah. Next slide. Yeah. Well, that was a, yeah, that's a uh, good meeting thing. Uh, yeah, the, um, well, actually, the rest of the slides are basically uh, uh, for reference. Uh, we wanted to uh, open it up for a question. John, I wanted to go through that Ethernet frame thing and, and explain that a little bit because I think we had, uh, uh, where, where was, uh, let me see, I think you had that Ethernet frame stuff. Yeah. Where was that? Yeah, this is it, right? 
where were your Ethernet frame descriptions? Uh, the uh, the actual um, uh, which which slides were those? I wanted to kind of go over those. Yeah. Oh yeah, here they are. Okay. So um, what I wanted to say here was, uh, of course, everything depends on the Ethernet frame and how you can categorize the frame, uh, what the application is, uh, how is the application using uh, the IP technology to you know to perform its function. Uh, in in the case of uh, uh, of voice traffic, uh, we use the, uh, the uh, uh, usually what you'll see is I mean John maybe you can take over here. Uh, uh, what you'll normally have is the type link, the ether type, this particular area right here, ether type. This is going to give you an indication that the traffic is IPv4. So you want to be able to obviously use that information to uh, to to filter that right and now I think go ahead and explain how we, one would take the different fields include that in your filter and basically uh, just uh, you know filter the, the, the traffic of interest All right so as, as BJ mentioned you have the uh, uh, the, the, the Mac layer which um, has the type field so the the type would be either UDP, uh, TCP, uh, SCTP, whatever you're, you're looking at, and then that defines the, the next layer down. So in this case, it's a uh, uh, IPv4 frame. And then there's basically a header that's uh, predefined as part of the um, IPv4 protocol. Uh, so the actual, like for example, this, this, this IP address right here, the source address would be something like your normal IP addresses that you are assigned by your uh, uh, IP provider. So you would have those IP addresses here. You could use that as a, a pair of those addresses together to filter only that particular stream. In addition to that, that may not be sufficient to get the voice traffic of interest. Uh, in addition, you might need the, the UDP. For example, if this protocol said UDP, then the UDP layer pops up, right? And then now you are faced with understanding what uh, UDP ports are being used for, for SIP, for example, the UDP ports of interest are going to be what, 50, 60? What's the signaling? For SIP, yes. Yeah, for, for SIP, it's uh, 50, 60 is, is the UDP port. For, for the actual SIP signaling, the you know the uh, invite, okay, by, etc., um, and then uh, then the RTP is carry uh, within that SIP signaling. There will be the session description protocol that that, that assigns the uh, RTP ports, and a particular RTP port pair will be uh, for a particular uh, conversation. So you would then use that and then the RTP ports are generally even. Uh, you want to continue with that explanation, John? Uh, yeah, as part of the uh, the, the voice, uh, the, the SIP protocol, uh, uh, the RTP uh, ports that are used for the actual voice traffic are always assigned to even ports. And then there's uh, RTCP, or the real-time control protocol. It's another packet that uh, periodically gives you information uh, during the course of the call as uh, things like jitter. Basically, it's, it's information that will tell you the uh, the, the quality. Uh, there's actually an RTCP XR protocol, which is something in the uh, in some endpoints that will uh, give you even uh, further information. Um, yeah, I mean, contrary-wise, if you have a TCP protocol, uh, the uh, source of it is a a rather lengthy list of uh, uh, predefined assignments. So if you want to uh, look at uh, FTP uh, assignments, you would uh, select the TCP protocol and the source port definition would be 20 or 21 for for control. So the, all of the different uh, applications that are uh, further down can basically be defined in most cases uh, based on the uh, the source ports that are being used. And 
in like I have a Verizon at home, and uh, they actually use a different uh, source port. So um, the filters have the capability, basically, of going and putting in uh, custom uh, values as well. So instead of using port 80 for uh, uh, monitoring HTTP traffic, uh, they might say we want to make port 3000 our uh, our port for logging in. And in some cases, in security cases, the people will. Uh, define a port for an application that you might want to uh, get into. Um, but it's uh, it's very flexible, so you can go in and, uh, as it's showing here, you can uh, select the VLANs. Uh, we support the, the Q and Q, which is the multiple uh, VLAN uh, specification, um, and then burrow down from there. Okay. Yes, I think we have about five minutes left. Uh, <laughs> so, so here's, I mean, here's the, uh, the the SIP RTP filtering filter that we were using that Shashi was going to show you <laughs> that we could not actually uh, transfer over to her in the lab. Sorry about that, Shashi. Um, uh, but we were going to show you, this is the filter that she was going to invoke uh, for the actual filter. And... Um, uh, the other the other filters that we were going to explain to you were FCS errors and IP checksums. So in in the IP network, obviously, there are various integrity checks on these headers. And uh, uh, on the MAC frame, the FCS is the major check to make sure that the, the, uh, the frames are are uh, transmitted error free. Uh, and if the FCS error is, us is, is, is an error, usually that frame is dropped. And so if a frame is dropped, what happens? It normally some higher layer protocol will recover from that drop by either retransmission or uh, a timeout or something of that nature. Uh, in certain protocols, you don't worry about drop packets. You just have to compensate for drop packets. Uh, and similarly, for each protocol layer, there are checksums, IP checksum uh, for the IP header, uh, the TCP checksum for the TCP header, and UDP check, so, so, so on. Uh, all of these checksum, uh, so our Pakistan HD can trigger off of these as well uh, to see if particular um, traffic is encountering any kind of impairments as it is being switched by these uh, extremely fast core routers, uh, which can happen, okay? And uh, uh, so that's uh, uh, one of the ability of the hardware to, uh, to examine those. And here you can see that we can capture all uh, down below here. If you see this, uh, we, we had an expression here where we can, this is, these are all being ORed. We want to capture all frames that have a F the CRC the, the same as FCS. So the C if all frames that have C FCS error, all frames that have the IP v um, 4 checksum error, uh, the, or the TCP checksum error, or the UDP checksum error. So it will examine all packets uh, in that fashion and, try and capture only those. That will give you an indication of how much impairment there is in this very large pipe. Um, yeah, well, the Packet uh, Expert also gives you the ability to inject uh, frame check sequence errors so that if you want to uh, test a router to see how it handles uh, uh, packets of errors, we have the Packet Expert uh, that can generate it, then we can use this to monitor it. Right, exactly. Uh, of course, a lot of the traffic uh, these days is, is transmitted via HTTP, right, and um, or HTTPS, which is a secure protocol. And uh, so we can, uh, we're going to show you an example of how we capture only HTTP traffic. Um, um, so, okay, that's, I think, is sort of the end of our um, webinar. Uh, are there any questions? Um, from anyone. Please send us an email and we will um, be able to answer your question. Okay? Thank you everybody.